Hey, Forge fans, Anthony Urcioli here, Jessica Lisi with us as well. It's the match in review on the Forge Audio Network. Forge FC losing one nothing at home at Tim Hortons Field to Pacific FC. It was a midweek match, second to last match of the season for Forge. They play again on Sunday. It was the second of three matches in nine days. It felt odd going into the match, even just being on the field. It was... You know, it's a night game, midweek, the fall weather is kind of rolling in, had a weird feel to it. And the way this game played out, I think weird is a good way to describe it because uh, going through the stat line here, shot attempts, uh, 16 to five in favor of Pacific, shots on target, six to one. Tristan Henry was fantastic in this one, but possession, 61% in favor of Forge. Now that's a, that's a lot of possession. Shots just were not being taken. I mean, is it that simple that they just weren't taking enough attempts? Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's it's difficult to look at possession and think it's equivalent to how the match is going to turn out. The result obviously didn't favor that possession. You know, mm -hmm. Forge did have 61% possession, but anyone that watched that match knows within that first 20 minutes, for example, Pacific was the better team. They yeah. were a lot more dominant. They had an energy that Forge was unable to match. Um, I would say, obviously, Forge got better as the match went on. Um, but again, it is difficult to just look at possession in those stats and and in the end think that you know that's a good representation yeah. of what went on. Yeah, I don't know. Forge isn't thrilled with their game as a whole, but can you just kind of chalk this up to sometimes you give credit to the opponent. Now, Forge is better than they played. Right. But... Pacific deserves a lot of credit because to, yeah. to come on the road in Hamilton, again, midweek match, you wonder how a team's going to respond. A team from out west, you know, um, with the body clock stuff. And, yeah, it, it just credit to Pacific. They played really well. Yeah, absolutely. I think the stats do really point out um, – you know, the intensity difference within that final third. Yeah, Pacific you talked was, a lot about intensity. Yes, yeah. that was something that really stood out to me the entire match. I felt like right from the get-go, Pacific really knew what it was that they came here for, um, and it really showed in their play. They were fantastic off of the counterattacks. That's how they caught Forge a few times. Um, and, you know, they were, they were just a difficult team to deal with today. So, you know, it's not to say that Forge had a horrible performance. They definitely did not. Um, it wasn't their best performance. Right. Um, but, again, it's that high pressure that's really... Really hard to deal with it causes turnovers which we obviously that led to the goal and that's nothing against the player that you know had done it um it happens to everybody it's a part of the game yeah. but it is a very difficult situation to be in when you have somebody you know forcing you to quickly make a decision with very minimal space so yeah the, the press it's funny because sometimes and the press isn't always about getting there and, and stealing the ball sometimes no. it's just about making players rush and make decisions that they might not make if they had time yeah uh, absolutely a lot of times as a, as a striker you know you're told you're that first line of defense so obviously your goal if you can, you know, repossess it off of that that center back, that's fantastic. You're right. You're running right down the throat of the other team. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of times that's not the case, and you're able to just force them to create a turnover, make yeah. that horrible pass, or you know, your, your teammate is able to step and actually right. win that ball or repossess it. So yeah, no, definitely. Um, but it is it is again a hard situation to be in when the team is yeah. that aggressive. Um, defensively and then the other side of that too is when when you are pressing that way and the defenders know it's coming so even if you've been doing it for 60 minutes and nothing quite happened that 61st that 62nd as a defender that that's that's in your mind because yeah. the second it touches your foot you're expecting someone on you yeah um, and Pacific was consistent with it. Yeah, absolutely. It's an intimidation factor. Mm -hmm. um, and nobody wants to give the ball up within their own half and, and have the other team counter yeah. them and, you know, lead to a goal potentially. Yeah. But, um, yeah, no, definitely. Um, you know, Jordan Brown scored the goal for Pacific. Um, it was off a of forge turnover. He was playing League One this season um, with Electric City. So uh, all of a sudden he's playing pro, and not only is he – starting in that striker role he's scoring big goals and big matches so he's he's a good story too uh before though we get to that head coach technical director of forge fc bobby smirniotis post-match here's what he had to say yeah it's uh, quite an interesting game you know probably come out slow in the first uh, 10 minutes or so um after that okay we've we've dictated play we've created uh situations um, but you need to take a little bit more uh, shots on the opponent's goal in order to uh, to score. Justin's made a couple of good saves in the first half, but of course that's his job. Um, after that, okay, it's a team that's waiting for 
a mistake or something on the, on the field to be able to capitalize. Yeah, and it's unfortunate we've made a mistake there in the second half. You know, a young player, uh, he's going to learn from it, that's for sure. And that's the highs and lows of football, right? Last uh, week, you're a hero, you score a goal. This week, there's a mistake in the central axis, but he's only going to become better for it. That thing, I'm, I am sure of. You know, he's, a, he's an excellent player, and I'm obviously talking about uh, Malik. He's had an excellent game. But, yeah, that's football, eh? Whether you get paid uh, 10 million a year or whatever our guys are getting paid, it's things are going to happen. Uh, so now, match on on the weekend. Does this result change anything this weekend? The way you approach Halifax? Yeah, I think you know for today it was our our ability to to look at the first place and have an uh, ability to be at the top of the table. After that, it doesn't really make a difference to me. Um, you mentioned that they're a team today that's looking to just pounce on mistakes and hit you on the counter, and obviously they do that, and especially a couple a couple times they had chances in that second half. Was it maybe uncharacteristic? the amount of times you were giving the ball away? Well, I think, you know, a lot of them, if I look at it, they've, they've come after the goal. So I think there it's, uh, it's natural because then they're going to sit a little bit further back. Um, there's going to be some opportunities, and it's, it's only normal. If we're reversing our situations, we're probably going to do the same thing. Um, but up to that point, uh, I thought we were, we were very good on the ball. You know, we're, we're good in our movements. You know, they good, did a good uh, job of just shifting and, and uh, working in certain zones. What we didn't do enough of was, uh, was make those incision runs in behind um, that we usually do. Uh, and that's indicative when you look at our shots and you look at our corners. There's certain metrics that we look at at the end of the game, which tells me how deep we got in certain positions. Uh, and today we've only got two corners, and that's uncharacteristic of us. Um, so that's also probably you know one of those reasons we haven't been as good as we wanted in the attack for all of the ball that we had. Because um, you can keep a team off of uh, off of the score sheet, but I think we for all of what we were doing, we could have had some more uh, attacking situations and uh, final attempts to the goal. Uh, and just. Kind of out of curiosity, the, the halftime switch, taking Rama out, maybe changing the way that you're building out a little bit with, with that sub. Um, just was that mostly tactical or was it also kind of getting Rama off for you know, card reasons or whatever? Card reasons. Simple. You know, you sometimes you don't want a player to go uh, 10 days or so on without any minutes uh, going into a playoff game. So, you know, we had a couple of players in that situation. So you minimize risk. You go with, uh, with one. Um, you know, he was talked to by the referee at some point. So, you know, it's, it, it's coming. So the, there was Bobby, and, and he touched upon it. You know, Forge liked to attack areas and spaces of the field, and they knew coming into this one, and the players talked about it too coming into this one. Pacific, their bread and butter is through the midfield with Aparicio and with Bustos, and so Forge was going to try to attack wide and through the flanks. And, you know, they did get to those spaces, but when you're not getting attempts on goal and, and Forge, you know, five attempts, only one on target. It also limits your opportunities with set pieces and corner kicks, which as we talked about last match, um, two of their, their two goals came off of set pieces. So you wonder how, you know, shots on target and shot attempts, sometimes you don't realize that they also lead to corner set yeah. pieces and yet not a ton of opportunities with for forge even with set pieces and corners on this one yeah there how many corners were there tonight there yeah, were not not very many i think there was like two or yeah. something but um yeah i mean definitely they had a lot of success with their set pieces we spoke about how important set pieces were um just the last review um and it's unfortunate for them that they weren't able to get that many set pieces but you know at the end of the day, those chances that they did have, they need to be clinical within that final third. It's it's really unfortunate that they weren't able to get on the end of it or, you know, make a good connection with it. Um, there weren't that many chances created. Again, they weren't very clinical within that final third. Um, but the few chances that they did have because they weren't able to get those set pieces for mm -hmm. those additional chances, those few chances that they did create in the run of play were critical and, and unfortunately again they weren't able to to finish them yeah and the reason forge focused on the flanks like they did is because pacific with i mentioned bustos and aparicio but um you know forge kyle becker was back this match um hojab rapport and sissoko started and i just you know i think you like to think that most of these matches are won through the midfield yeah and i when we talk about creating chances I mean, there's many different ways, but when you are attacking wide and through the flanks, 
where are the other chances? Are they going to come on crosses? Are they looking for, for runs and cuts into the middle and kind of those link plays? Like, how do you create the offense when you're focusing on attacking wide? Yeah, I mean, it would. It all depends on, obviously, um, the defensive shape of the other team. So a lot of times you might be able to play that ball in behind. There wasn't very many runs uh, from four to front three today that were, you know, in behind to get that ball to create let's say, an opportunity from a flank, flank player to get a shot off and potentially score like we've seen with, you know, Schwanier in, in the past, and he's able to get in there and, and take it, have mm -hmm. a great strike and, and finish. Um, that was missing today. There wasn't that fire to get in behind and, and really create a chance um, for those flank players. But um, to answer your question, a lot of times, yes, crosses create a lot of chances. And, and that's where, you know, you need your midfielders crashing the box and you need your, your runs from the other two uh, forwards to be in the box. And, you know, I, I remember in the first half, there was a couple chances where we spoke and we were like, wow, there's there's nobody in the box or people are holding their runs. They're both holding their runs. One of them needs to be crashing. So, yeah, I do think that they just really lacked um, fluidity mm -hmm. in that final third yeah. today. There wasn't they weren't all on the same page when they did decide to cross and, right. and they weren't eager um, in eager enough in regards to their runs and, and making those, you know, mm -hmm. diagonal runs in behind. Yeah. Um, I mentioned Sissoko. He spoke post-match. Let's go down and hear what he had to say. Um, honestly, disappointed because uh, we lost the game. But uh, honestly, we showed some uh, good things on the pitch and then uh, we're going to, you know, prepare the next match. And then uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to have a better result Sunday. Um, I know stats can sometimes be misleading, but 61% possession for, for Forge tonight. Just your thought, why maybe that didn't translate into more offense for you guys? Yeah, we, we created some good chances if you look back the game. But just the things like, uh, you know, we created our, our opportunities. Uh, we have to be like more, you know, killer in the uh, final third. But honestly, uh, today we played well. And then uh, we didn't have the luck, the goal. We needed to score. But uh, I'm pretty sure next game we're going to score. Um. You know, obviously, you know, having the ball a lot is one thing, but it maybe seemed to, to give it away a little bit more often than usual. Maybe give them some more of those counterattacking chances than usual. Yeah, it's part of the it's part of the game. You know, our uh, identity on the pitch. We have to play football. We have to take risk. And then uh, today, yes, of course, uh, we took risk and we gave away some balls. One of the things that we're not gonna blame uh, a player, but uh, we showed the good thing, and then we're gonna keep. Uh, you know, building uh, with this uh, momentum. And then, yeah, we pretty, honestly, we did well today. What the ball. Does this result of losing this game change the way you guys look at the game on the weekend at home? No, never, never, never. Every time we, we go on the pitch, it's a mentality here. And then uh, we prepare every game as a playoff, as a final game. We, we play for three points every game, every week. So, no, no, no. It's not going to change anything. Sunday, we're going to show up and, and then... Um, play uh, as a final. Yeah. Uh, you know, we can always count on Abubakar Sissoko to, be, to, to bring some positivity. Um, and those are guys you want on your club, especially in moments like this. Forge, still with a match left. If you're wondering about these standings, so at the conclusion of this match, Pacific drops down to third place. They do get leapfrogged by Pacific. Pacific does have a shot at top spot. Uh, so they're, what, two points behind Ottawa. So they have a chance to surpass Ottawa this weekend. Forge is not. The highest they can finish is second. Um, so Pacific, Forge, Cavalry round out the top four. And Pacific and Cavalry are playing each other this weekend, so that'll be interesting. But for Forge, they play Halifax. Halifax is nothing to play for. This is where, and Bobby talked about it earlier, you start thinking about players that are maybe in some card trouble, uh, maybe a chance to get some of your younger players in. Tristan Borges, by the way, did not dress. He wasn't in uniform for this match because of some... Uh, because of the card accumulation, and they wanted to play it safe, which is fair. Uh, Rosart Rama played the first half, did not play the second. He got a warning <laughs> from the official, and they decided to, to kind of take him out at halftime because he was in some card trouble as well. So this is now that first place is not in the cards. Forge now approaching things maybe a little differently, but they have another match left. And you want some kind of good feeling heading into the postseason. There's, they're going to be in the semifinal. That's already been booked. It'll be a two-leg semifinal. Depends where they finish. And 
I mean, listen, at the end of the day, they were going to play in the semifinal regardless. They're still going to get there. There's still plenty to play for. And so guys like Sissoko keeping things positive. And at the end of the day, yeah, I mean, there's more to be played. And Forge is very much still they believe they're a contender regardless of this result. So it's time to put that one in the rearview mirror and you know you have a game on Sunday after a midweek match so not a lot of time to think about it either yeah yeah it's nice to see that there is still positivity um you know flowing throughout the locker room and you know that's that's hats off to Bobby because obviously that starts at your coaching Mm -hmm. regardless of the result you do need that positivity to flow down in order for your team to be successful within the next match and again although first is no longer in you know their grasp um it's okay because that doesn't mean that you can't you know, be the champion at the mm-hmm. end of the day. Um, they have to go and, and kill their performances in all the other matches. So they are still on the road to becoming champions, and they're a great team, and they're very capable. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I definitely think that positivity is is the first step to, to becoming a champion. And Forge has two championships, neither of which were won at home. So th- they're used to winning big games on the road. I don't think that'll be an issue. All right, your final again from Tim Hortons Field in Hamilton. one nothing Forge FC falling to Pacific. Another regular season match remaining Sunday, 1 o'clock, ForgeFC.ca for tickets. And that's going to do it for the match in review. Make sure you check out the Forge Audio Network from now until that match because plenty of content coming for you. I'm Anthony Urcioli. And I'm Jessica Lisi. We'll talk to you soon. This has been Match in Review with Anthony Urcioli on the Forge Audio Network. For the latest on all things Forge FC, subscribe on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts.